Hello, I'm Dave Goldberg, faculty member at the University of Illinois. And today I want to talk to you about Mr. Spock, passion, and engineering. These three things don't seem to have much in common, uh, but as engineers, uh, many of us, some of us, want to be the quintessential rational man, the quintessential rational person. Uh, and I've represented that rational person by Mr. Spock, the, the Vulcan uh, sci chief science officer on the Starship Enterprise in the TV series Star Trek. Now, Spock was a really smart guy. He was extremely logical, as he said over and over on the TV series. And he played 3D chess like a, like a dream. But what was his weakness? And we'll come back to examine that in a moment. But first we want to talk a little bit about the passions and emotion because they've gotten kind of a bad rap in, in the Western tradition. Uh, emotions have been treated as something to be explicitly minimized or avoided over the years. The Stoics, for example, uh, said that, it, you know, that, that being emotional in any respect was the wrong way to go. And rationalists have tried to minimize the importance of emotion in, um, in human life. And it really wasn't until the 19th century that emotion was let out of the, uh, the bottle as a, su a subject worthy of intellectual discussion uh, by, by, by people like Sigmund Freud. And uh, uh, Freud, among others, talked about a hydraulic metaphor, that that is that the the emotions are something that gets bottled up as a, uh, an emotional energy that, that uh, can get bottled up and might explode. Well, that's an interesting model, and it, maybe it works a little bit for anger, but it's kind of hard to imagine of thinking of love that way and, and other kinds of sympathetic emotions. And so we need to explore a little bit about, well, what are emotions really? And there are various theories, and, and one that's gotten some uh, traction is, is the notion that Emotions, uh, in, in a philosophical sense, are intentional. That is, they're, they're not things that happen to us, but they're, they're, they're uh, cognitive states that are oriented towards things in the world. So emotions, in a sense, are judgments about the world, and emotions are actually things that change our world locally uh, when we're indignant. Um, that changes our feelings about the state of the world and actually changes our world for us. When we, um, when we feel pride, that changes something. Um, so there's, there's this sense in which emotions are about other things, and, and they're a way that maintains our, our dignity and, and self-esteem. Now, so if we think of this in the context of, of Mr. Spock, do you, do you really want to be this very rational being who's whose only mode of, of thinking is this logical uh, mode of thinking. And, and so we have to actually go back to the, the, the television series and take, take it seriously for a moment and ask, well, why was it in the television series that Captain Kirk was always the better strategic thinker? When, when the going got rough, Captain Kirk came up with the solution while Mr. Spock was still sitting there being logical about it. And so the problem that Spock had was that he had trouble making judgments about the world because he was so devoid of emotion. And so this emotionlessness left him unable to make judgments and made him unable to, in some sense, navigate in the world in a practical way. So the takeaway from this for, uh, for engineers is that emotions are central to our ability to choose things. Um, and in many ways, they're the the source of our values and, and what it is that we, we, we believe is important in the world. But they're also, from an engineering perspective, the source of our engineering judgment. No emotion, um, really, it, no judgment. And so, of course, we're not saying here that we want emotions run amok. Um, but what we are saying is that we don't want to deny their importance. And so it's very important for engineers to develop their emotional intelligence uh, at work, at home, and in their lives in general. 